All right, the Saints are now playing for a high draft pick. And uh, maybe the Ben Johnson sweepstakes? We'll talk to our next guest. We are the Out of Bounds Show, ESPN 105.9 The Zone. Uh, Game day at Martin's in Livingston is awesome. Beautiful restaurant, bar, TVs everywhere. Game day at Martin's in Livingston, whether it's college football or the NFL. Fabulous appetizers, amazing burgers and wings and entrees, all at Martin's in Livingston. They have all the NFL games, too, by the way. And they'll have the World Series, even though it's already 3-0 Dodgers. So, anything you need, they got at Martin's in Livingston. We want to welcome in Mike Detillier, WWL Radio TV New Orleans. He joins us on the Farm Bureau Insurance Guest Line. And this is ESPN 105.9 The Zone. Uh, he won't be the only one, Mike D, but now that we know that the Saints will be making a move, what do you think the uh, the offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions is one of the super hot names? Um, do you think it will be kind of the first one to get there? What do you think the sweepstakes will look like to get Ben Johnson from the Detroit Lions? It'll be a lengthy line. I mean, he is, you know, he just is that hot guy now. Uh, and so I think it'll be a long line to get Ben Johnson, uh, and he'll have his choice of where he wants to go as a head coach. And he turned down a coaching job last year. He did. Yeah. So uh, he goes to show he ain't particular, uh, and he's just not going to jump at any job. I think he's uh, definitely going to have options as a head coach. All right, so Ben Johnson will be on – you know, Mickey Loomis, um, we're both confident in saying Mickey Loomis will make this hire, right? I, well, I would be shocked if he didn't. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, he's in a position where Mickey's going to make that call when he decides to walk away from the Saints. It won't be the Saints telling him. It'll be him deciding uh, to retire or not. And he's He's made that. He talked about it last year at the end of the season that um, one day he knows he's going to wake up and say, you know, it's time for me to walk away. But that isn't – he made the comment that it wasn't that day. So um, it, it'll be his call on when he wants to walk away. All right. So he's got uh, Miss Benson's ear. Um, he's in the family like you've told us. Um, he's a part of the will, all that. Um, uh, is there another guy or two, Mike D, that you think may not be as red hot as Ben Johnson, offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions, but is there, and I don't know if you're, you're thinking Vrabel too, I think he's a hell of a coach, but is there another guy or two that you look around the league and say, hey, these two are going to be highly coveted too outside of Ben Johnson, Mike D? I think I think it'll be an offensive minded coach. That has been the trend. Uh I do think that Mike uh Rabel will get another shot at this uh as a head coach. Not exactly sure where. I think for a lot of people they're gonna be surprised the list for you know, the one name that gets brought up all the time, Bill Belichick will be short if not he's not on any. Now, I just think, you know, if he was going to get hard, Arthur Blank would have hired him in Atlanta. It, it was, it looked to be the spot. But the thing with Bill Belichick is, and the resume is impressive, but he also wants full control. He can say what he wants that, you know, I'll take a job and don't have control over personnel. Uh, and if you believe that, I've got, mountain front property to sell you right behind my home here on the bayou. It, come on. It, he has been so bad drafting players throughout the years since he really has taken control. Uh, he does not listen to his scouting department or coaches or anything else. It's his own sort of whim on who he wants to select. Don't be surprised that uh, he gets zero calls about uh, a head coaching job. I hope Jerry Jones doesn't call him, Mike D. Ugh. No, Jerry's – I mean, on. 
that wouldn't work because Jerry wants to run it. Jerry's not giving up control to anyone. And so um, you can be friends with somebody. You can be drinking buddies with somebody, but it doesn't mean you want to work with them. Okay. Uh, So I've always felt that way, you know, when everybody was talking about Sean Payton maybe leaving to go to Dallas. I knew that wasn't going to happen. Jerry was never going to give Sean a tremendous amount of control because he wants it. Uh, So why would he give it to Belichick? He's not going to do that either. Okay, everybody thinks Belichick's just going to walk in and all of a sudden he's going to put his hands on a team and they're going to get better. Well, if that was the case, how come he didn't do it in New England once Brady left? Right. He couldn't do it. it because he's not a really good talent evaluator for all the pluses with him. And I think he's a tremendous defensive coach, maybe the greatest of our lifetime. He never really kind of caught up with the way offenses are in the NFL today. And he's not really good because I've had someone who coached with him tell me he's much better with veteran talent evaluation than with college talent. And I've heard stories that they've had second round pick grades on players that they have picked in the first round. But he liked him for whatever reason. And so that's where they went. So he, he I don't think that's going to work. And I think Arthur Blank was told by Robert Kraft and people with who had been working with him, hey, get ready. If you hire him, he's going to tell you everything you want to hear. And then once he gets there, he takes control. Mm. He's, he's going to be the head coach, general manager, everything. And again, unbelievable resume. But, you know, he did that with a guy that um, maybe is the greatest player we've seen in our lifetime. That's Tom true. Brady. That's true. And, and then once Brady left, it, okay, he could not get that magic back at all. Uh, you know, and it, it fell apart real quick. And you look at that team, you know, Gerard Mayo's just trying to, you know, uh, get his head above water, which shows you how bad a, the Jets are. That they could, you know, the Jets couldn't beat them. And for, you know, a lot of people, oh, fire the head coach, fire the head coach. It's the same stuff I heard in New York, okay, with Robert Sala. They fired him. They placated to Aaron Rodgers and got him Devontae Adams. They finally got the contract ready and they got Hassan Reddick. They got the same record the Saints have. They two and six. Exact same record. Coaching fires in the middle of the year rarely work. You may have a little bump for a week. All you're doing is to placate to the fans. Because they want people fired. Uh, But it doesn't work. Because guess what? The same people that are coming up with game plans and coaching the players are still there. You can't fire the entire coaching staff. Can't do that in the middle of the year. You can't fire a team. So you, you have what you have. The only Superman's not coming in, and he's not coming to save the day for you. Only people that can save you are the people in that locker room. Hmm. All right, Mike D. Let's say this plays out. The Saints have a top five pick. Um, it doesn't look like anybody's going to beat Carolina um, uh, on the race to the bottom. But let's say the Saints are, you know, somewhere in that I don't know three to seven range or something. Um, I know it's early, but they go out and get a new coach on the offensive side of the football, Ben Johnson or another hot shot OC. What direction do you think they should go if they have a big time top pick? You got to go quarterback. You have to. Um, you got to rebuild your offensive and defensive lines. Uh, but uh, for me, if if I got a top five pick, I have to go quarterback. Uh, it, you know, 
you, you might be your only opportunity to get one of those top guys. Uh, you got to be bad before you can get one. Uh, Cincinnati wasn't a great team. They got Joe Burrow. Uh, and they became very competitive real fast. Uh, you look at the commanders. Had the second overall pick in the draft. Uh, you got Jaden Daniels. You're pretty competitive at this stage. And Jaden's just magic. Um, and you can see it. He's the coolest cat out on. You almost got to take his blood pressure uh, to make sure he's still breathing. Uh, that That's how he is. And I think the greatest example is if I'd have told you this a year and a half ago, that the Houston Texans are one of the best teams in the NFL, you'd have put me away. They got <laughs> C.J. Stroud. But they got the right coach in D'Amico Ryans, and they got the right quarterback in C.J. Stroud. And sometimes um, it doesn't work that way, but and we're watching something happen that is rare in the NFL, a rookie quarterback not playing like a rookie. He's playing like a seasoned pro. We saw it last year with C.J. Stroud with the Houston Texans. We're watching it again with the Washington Commanders and Jaden Daniels. He looked like he's done this eight or nine years. I mean, you know, that is rare in the NFL. Rare to see it. Most of the time, these guys struggle. Even Caleb Williams. And you you saw it. I mean, uh, he had, he's going to ride the roller coaster. At times, he shows you he's got a lot of skills. And then other times, he's way off with throws. Uh, we're seeing it with Drake May. Uh, Sean Payton seeing it with Bo Nix. Even though they really took the belt out and spanked the Saints' backside, there were five passes of 12 yards or more against the Saints. He missed. Wide open receivers. Um, now, he's got some escapability that's pretty good. But, uh, again, you go through those growing pains with a young quarterback. Man, the growing pains ain't a lot in Washington, and it wasn't a lot in Houston. Both that is something we don't see a lot. We saw it a few years back with Dak as a rookie with the Cowboys that he came in there and he played like a, a veteran. But they are few and far between uh, to see that type of thing. I know Peyton Manning says this at Manning Camp every year. He has all the counselors. And, you know, it's anywhere from 45 to 55 starting college quarterbacks. And, you know, he goes through this long speech and he ends it with, I ask you guys to do one thing for me. And that in your rookie year, you finally eclipse my interception record as a first-year starting quarterback, which is 28. He said, I've held that record way too long. It's (laughs) one of you guys' responsibility to break it. Man. Um, And think think of that. Who, Who was more prepared to play in the NFL than Peyton Manning? And he's got more interceptions than any other rookie quarterback in National Football League history. Yeah, what was it, 31, 32? I think it's 28. 28, okay. Okay. Yeah, I saw, I've I've heard him do those interviews. In fact, he did one this summer and mentioned it again. He said uh, if Eli would have not sat the first eight games, then he would have brought, I mean, he was having fun with it, but he said if Eli doesn't get to sit the first eight games of his rookie year, then he would have broken it. Uh, he said, I had to play all 16, and they never would pull me, which I thought was funny. Um, you know, here's the other story, and I didn't know this until two weeks ago. I sort of forgot about it. Uh, Drew Brees came on the show, and I, well, I was just questioning him about rookie quarterbacks, and he was like, he, he went through this long thing about the, the process and, and how fast it is at the NFL level. and how quickly you have to process information and get the ball off and everything else. And he went to end it. And I went to ask him another question. He was like, Mike, I got one more thing to say. I got benched three times as a rookie. Benched three times as a rookie wow. because of his play at quarterback. So, I mean, <laughs> for everybody that gets upset, well, 
you know, because we got some of these geniuses, you know, that'll text a call in and you get them to football's football. Don't matter if it's high school or the pros. Okay. They play with a similar ball, but football ain't the same. Uh, okay. Uh, you can talk that Al Bundy stuff, but all I'm telling you is at that level, the speed of the players and how they play this game is totally different from anything you've ever seen. Even if you've played at an LSU or an Alabama or Ohio State or Michigan, it doesn't matter. Speed of the game is warp speed compared to what you've ever played at at the collegiate level. Every quarterback will tell you that. And, you know, from Drew to Peyton, and these are some of the greatest that have ever played the game, that it is really difficult uh, to come in there in today's game, and they try to trick you with different looks. And what I see today, the biggest difference of how they attack young quarterbacks used to be they used to send extra people coming off the edge, and they still do. The way they really clip you at, right up the middle. It's the shortest venue to get to you, right up the middle. And you see a lot more interior blitzes than you've ever seen before. Uh, so, man, if you're a quarterback, you got yourself some issues. Uh, if you're a young one, just trying to process all of that. And and Drew went through a long deal about, you know, that that's part of it, mentally understanding where you have to go with the ball, and accepting, too, sometimes an incomplete pass is the best throw you can make. Mike Dettelier, WWL Radio TV New Orleans. He joins us on the Out of Bounds Show. Brought to you by Subway at Grant's Ferry. Subway at Grant's Ferry. Go ahead and order your next catering order for your ball team or your teacher's meeting at Subway at Grant's Ferry. Mike D. on the Out of Bounds Show and the Farm Bureau Insurance Guest Line. Mike, LSU will take a week off. Um, and then they'll face Alabama in an elimination game for the college football playoff. With, do you think that Brian Kelly, Nussmeyer, and the defense and everybody else will respond in a big way, and do you expect one hell of a ball game at night in a week and a half? Yeah. I mean, uh, I didn't think they played their best against A&M even when they had a lead. Uh, one, you, they can't run the ball at all. We've talked about this on the show before. Uh, they've had difficulties running the football all year long, and they couldn't stop the run. Uh, and now there was some extenuating circumstances with that, too. Uh, Le'Veon Moss is a young man from Louisiana. He went to Struma High School in Baton Rouge. Dreamed all his life about playing for LSU. They did offer late in the process, but he was not their top guy. And initially, uh, Le'Veon, he came to a couple camps uh, uh, I worked, and he had told me he, he was committed to Alabama. And, you know, he, he really talked glowingly about going to Alabama, playing for Coach Saban, all this other stuff. And then all of a sudden he takes a trip to A&M, <laughs> and he dumped that commitment, and he was headed to, to Aggieland. He was motivated a little bit playing LSU. And Le'Veon Moss is a guy that's a really talented running back. I, I, I don't see how LSU sort of missed on that. But they were shooting for what they thought was bigger game, and they got caught with it. And, and so he, 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 was, he was ready to roll that night. And, man, you weren't prepared for the, for the option quarterback. And – Brian Kelly and, and Blake Baker made that comment after the game, weren't prepared for it. They thought they were going to catch Connor Wegman, and Connor, he didn't play well at all. No. So I think they'll be ready for Alabama. They'll be ready for Alabama. Now, again, Milrow had a great game last year against LSU. He really did. If you were playing tag uh, football, he'd have scored every time he scored in, in real football. But uh, it's an interesting contest, and you have to play LSU at night in Baton Rouge. That ain't the easiest venue in the world. Mm -mm. Wow. Okay. Well, um, A&M's on a roll, and um, we'll see what happens. Hey, they better buckle it up this weekend. That's all I'm going to tell you. 
South Carolina, their front seven is very good on defense. Uh, Herb Tyler and I, we you know we do the pregame for LSU, and we we're talking about defenses across the SEC, and, and Herb was adamant about best defense I've seen all year long in the SEC, front seven wise, like not secondary. Front seven, he said, with South Carolina, they're gonna give people the problems because they can get after the quarterback and they really get a lot of penetration into the backfield. LSU should have lost that game. That day, South Carolina was the better team against LSU. But Nussbaum made some unbelievable throws in the fourth quarter. And then South Carolina, with an opportunity late to kick a field goal that would have put it in overtime, they missed the field goal. And LSU got an interception that uh, Harold Perkins uh, sort of set the tone and and gave them a little lump. But, man, Texas A&M better buckle it up because South Carolina is going to get after you. They got a lot of speed uh, up front, and they got penetration ability uh, coming off the edges. Now, again, offensively, they limited. They run the ball well, just can't throw it very well. Uh, either that or they'd have beat Alabama, to be honest with you. Uh, they, they had Bama on the ropes and just couldn't put them away. But uh, South Carolina, Texas A&M might be a game you take a real long look at. And that's an emotional game after playing LSU and then you play South Carolina. Keep an eye on that one this weekend. Ooh, yeah, because it could be, it definitely could be a letdown game for be a trap. Yeah, uh, it's a you hear the trap spring. No, no doubt about it. Mike D on the Out of Bounds show. All right, Mike D, uh, have a great week, and uh, we'll catch up again for LSU Bama next week. We'll do it. Thank you, brother. Mike Detillier at Mike Detillier on Twitter. He joined us on the Out of Bounds show, brought to you by Subway. And they're super fresh sandwiches at Grant's Ferry. If you're looking to cater for your ball team, dance team, the teacher, students, Subway at Grant's Ferry. Call them today. The Out of Bounds show is also brought to you by Sound and Communications. If you need a new sound system, video wall for your business, for your school, for your government building, for your hospital, that's powered by SoundComAV.com. Uh, cater lunch today. Subway at Grants Ferry. We're live in the Bank Plus studio. Bank Plus, it's more than a name. It's a promise. We would love for you to download the Out of Bounds radio app. That way you can stream the show. Anytime, anywhere. Hour number three of the show coming up. Lunch today brought to you by the delicious mouth-watering Euros. At Aplos in the Renaissance and Aplos in Highland Village. Back in a minute.